Is Sofia Coppola's Priscilla a must-see biopic? Here's what the reviews say. Is this any better than Elvis? Did we need two straight years of Elvis biopics? Does Gen Z even care about Elvis? How many times can I type Elvis before running out of room? Sofia Coppola has quietly been one of the best writer-slash-directors working in Hollywood for a very long time, and somehow, every time one of her movies releases, it's both a big deal, to people in the know, and goes by without a bang, to the mainstream and most award ceremonies. But doing a movie about Elvis? You have our curiosity. And it's about his wife Priscilla? Now you have our attention. Priscilla premiered at the Venice Film Festival, that's where these reviews came from, and will come out in theaters on October 27, 2023. It stars Kelly Spaney, Jacob Elordi, Doug Maradaminchik, Rain Monroe Boland, Emily Mitchell, Jorge Cadence, Rodrigo Fernandez Stahl, and Luke Humphrey. Here's what critics have to say about the film. The premise. Based on Priscilla's 1985 memoir of their marriage, Elvis, and me, and made with her full buy-in, Coppola gives us Scylla's side of the story, and she certainly thinks so. Priscilla spans 10 years of her relationship with Elvis, Aussie actor Jacob Elordi from The Chaste, if wildly age-inappropriate courtship, he was 24, she was 14, on a US Air Force base in West Germany in 1959 to the ash end of their relationship when he was chugging pills and shaking his hips in Vegas and she was solo parenting at Graceland, wrung out by his neglect and controlling nature. We get a quite different Elvis performance here. Why must we pit two kings against each other, one might ask, but it's hard not to compare the Euphoria alum's turn to Austin Butler's recent embodiment of the iconic singer. While Oscar-nominated Butler convincingly boosted his career through a publicly intense process to become the king, Elordi's journey has been much less publicized. This, it turns out, works greatly in favor of the Australian actor, who comes in as the underdog and sweeps Priscilla and the viewers off their feet in one big swing. Despite the film being about the woman, it could not have been told without a precise dissection of the man she orbited for such a vital part of her early life. Elordi understands this need for his presence without aggressively pursuing the spotlight and, under Coppola's masterful guide, delivers the greatest work of his career so far. As the audience, along with Priscilla, gets its first close-up glimpse of Elvis, we can see that Jacob Elordi, the 26-year-old Australian actor from Euphoria and the Kissing Booth films, doesn't look all that much like him. Yet his lush body language is perfect, and what he does with Elvis's voice brings him closer to being a dead ringer than, in my opinion, Austin Butler was. Elvis's speaking voice was a true paradox. He was a rock and roller who sang like a house on fire, but when he spoke it was in the quietest velvet tones, incredibly serene and polite the voice of a good old boy with an inner touch of sadness. He used that quietude to draw the world to him. And Elordi nails that. His Elvis treats Priscilla with consummate gentleness, and we discover, from their first conversation, what that sadness is about. Elvis's mother, Gladys, died the year before, and as he explains to Priscilla his mama was everything to him. Elvis endears himself to Priscilla by showing his sensitive side, relating to her his homesickness and his grief over his late mother. Is this an act of grooming? Priscilla does not really editorialize on that, instead calmly showing true events as they happened, or in some version of how they happened, and letting the audience make assessments. As Elvis, Jacob Elordi best known as a tortured hunk on HBO's Euphoria carefully calibrates Elvis's appeal and his pill-addled, domineering presence, his exacting demands and storms of frightening anger. His misogyny, too. It's a more enlightening take on the man than the one seen in Elvis, a movie more interested in broad strokes iconography than interiority. Spaney plays Priscilla with, Grace. Spaney's performance is endlessly beautiful, and she finds the fear, eagerness, and anger that encapsulated Priscilla's years with Elvis. It's such a joy to watch her find the young woman's agency, despite her struggle to have it acknowledged and appreciated by those around her. Spaney's tender nature gives way to an independence that feels alive and present, yet she doesn't compromise when it comes to Priscilla's internal rage, making her just as perfect for her role as Elordi is for his. This is certainly the first of many dense roles for Spaney, and if she can handle something as nuanced and intricate as this film, she has an extremely bright future ahead of her. What the film successfully does is to emphasize Priscilla's youth, 
This is thanks to Spaney's diminutive stature, coming in at 5 feet 1 inch, and her ability to pass for an admittedly very physically precocious teen. This emphasis is important as it underlines the girl's complete naivete and lack of agency. The beauty of this probing study of a lonely private world in the glare of the public eye is that while it appears on the surface to show a protagonist without agency, manipulated and compartmentalized since her teens, the Priscilla Presley portrayed here with moving emotional transparency by Kelly Spaney is a self-possessed woman always attuned to her needs, who emerges from intoxication to begin a long, painful but ultimately decisive process of reassessment. This is a biopic with all the troops and faults. Beyond the admirable depth of the relationship it depicts, there is a certain slightness to Priscilla as a film, especially in an edit that combines a number of disjointed, oddly short scenes. That gives Priscilla the feel of a rote biopic, instead of the character portrait it really is, instead of the meditation on fame and boredom, which it also is. At first glance, the film appears to adopt biopic tropes pretty much wholesale, and there are times when we come dangerously close to Dewey Cox territory. But there is one major difference, Priscilla isn't the main character in her own life. When we first find her in an American diner in Wiesbaden, Germany, where her army father is stationed, she isn't an as yet undiscovered talent, she does not harbor any dreams that she will spend her entire life chasing, and she does not have a particularly sparkling personality. She is a normal girl of 14, bored in a city she doesn't know, picked by a friend of Elvis's to come to one of his parties simply because she is American like him and he misses home. Some viewers will find Coppola's restraint frustrating, I often have in the past. Instead of turning Priscilla's life story into an excessive cautionary tale or an empowering feminist fable, she has sketched a cool, non-judgmental portrait of someone who is a passive observer of her own existence. Perhaps the film could have done with a little more conversation and a little more action, but it's still a quietly affecting, sympathetic tribute to the kind of person who is a supporting character in most biopics. In its subtle way, it shows how things can be right in many ways but still just wrong enough to ensure that you are never relaxed. You can be in a comfortable household with a doting husband and a crowd of his friends, and still be lonesome tonight. Jared Russo, 